In this video, I'm going to show you how using Mago can transform your videos in really creative ways. I've been having a ton of fun using Mago and I've been pushing it to its limits to create some really wild videos. And I'm gonna show you how to use this cutting edge tool so that you can start creating too. Okay, let's get into it. So what is Mago? It's an AI driven video to video tool, which allows you to transform your footage in different ways. Like changing your video into different art styles. You can change select parts of your video like character replacement. It's incredible for VFX and compositing. And there are so many different ways that you can use it. It's an extremely flexible tool. What I really like is that they give you loads of settings to play around with so that you can dial in the best settings for your specific video. So let's jump in and I'll give you a quick tour of the settings and layout. So in Mango to create a new project, you just click on project and create new project. And down here, you can see all of my past projects that I've been working on. And you can also create folders if you want to categorize your projects. So you drag your video into here. So I'll just quickly upload an example video. And once you upload your video, it will give you the ability to trim it as well. And then just click trim and upload. So let's have a look at changing the style of a video. So now the video has been uploaded and you can see it in the timeline here. And I really like the layout that Mago have gone with. So you have your timeline here. You can select anywhere on the timeline or you can choose the frame here. And this blue bar here with the in and out points is the duration of what you want to export. So this is the main video. And if you click here, this is where we're gonna create our first stylized video. And if you want to change the name of that, just come up here and I can put dance one. And you'll notice we have some settings over here. So if we click on the model box, this gives you all their models that they have available. I'll just stick with this one for the moment. You can either upload your own stylized frame if you have one, but if we use their stylized frame option, it gives you a few options on different image editors to use. This is where we can have a lot of fun transforming our videos. So up here, you can choose the frame that you want to stylize. And because I'm doing it from the start, I'm just leaving it on zero. But if you do want to change it, I could put in 10 and you'll see it will update the image there. So we have Context, Mago, Nano Banana, and Sea Dream. Context, Nano Banana, and Sea Dream are really powerful powerful image editors, and I'll get to them shortly. I'll quickly look at Mago first, and this one is better suited for just changing the kind of art style of your video. So what's great is we can upload a style reference image. So what this will do, you can upload an image of a certain style, then Mago will look at this and actually create an automatic prompt, which describes that style, and then it will use the prompt and the reference image to create a stylized first frame in that certain style. I've got this image of what they call a synth wave kind of look. So I've added in the image and what's really cool is that Mago will look at that image and create an automatic prompt which describes that certain style. So it's looked at the video and it says man dancing outdoors and then vaporwave style with synth wave background with grid floor. So it's looked at that style image I've gave it and put that into the prompt, which is really helpful. Then if you click on generate image, so hopefully Mago will turn that first frame into the same style as that reference image I gave it. Okay, so it's finished and it looks pretty good. I mean, that is pretty awesome. It's managed to copy the style perfectly and it's kept the consistency of the first frame. And also you do have some advanced settings with the Mago image editor as well. I usually don't touch these, but a good one to leave on in my experience is the expand style option as this just helps to enhance the style that you want. So maybe play around with these settings if you're not getting the results that you're looking for. So if you want to use this image to then turn into a video, then just click on the use this button. But now let's have a quick look at the other image editors. So we have Context, Nano Banana, and Sea Dream. They're all quite similar, but my favorite ones are Nano Banana and Sea Dream. As with these two, you get the option to upload an image, kind of like the Mago image editor. So for example, I could upload an image of a certain helmet or character, and then say in the prompt something like, add the helmet from the reference image, then it will take what you put in that uploaded image onto the video. So this is really helpful if you have a certain design or style that you want to have in your video. But prompting is still incredibly powerful with these image editors. So I could just say, turn the man into a robot. I'll try one with Nano Banana and Sea Dream. Now the Sea Dream and Nano Banana ones look great. It's kind of made a hybrid version of the character. This was a very simple prompt, so you can add in more detail if you want to. As you can see, it's kept the background the same, and using these image editors is great for doing select changes in your videos. 
And here's a version where I said change it into an anime style, and it looks awesome. So I'm gonna go back to that vaporwave kind of look and I'll click on use this. So once you've chosen your first frame that you want to go with, it will pop up in this box here. And then we have to describe the video and the style in the prompt box. But what's great is they have an auto prompt button. So it's automatically created a prompt that's looked at that style and the video, and it makes a prompt which it thinks is best to create that video. I always make sure to check over this prompt to see if there's anything I don't want to include in the final video. So I think that prompt looks pretty good. So let's have a look at the control net settings. So this is where we can have a lot of fun and each of these settings can drastically change the output of your video. So depending on what you want to achieve in your video, it's best to know which ones to use. And I do urge you to experiment with these as well. So if we click over here, we have depth, normal map, pose, soft edge, and pose and depth. So these are what all of the control net types look like. So as you can see, they all have a very unique way on how they look at the video. To view these control net types in your video, just make sure to click on the all maps option in the preview window. So I'll actually do pose and depth on this one. And we have different settings here like pose strength and depth strength. I'm gonna keep these at their default settings, but I do urge you to kind of test these settings if you're not getting the results that you're looking for. And we have face mesh, which is great if you've got a video with a close up of a face or someone's face in the shot and you want to try keep it as accurate to the original video as possible. And in advance, we have the output size. So this model, the highest you can go to is 1280. Just a quick note here about the differences between the first frame version 3.4 and 3.3. The 3.4 model has an increased output size of 1600, but it has a lower max context size of 120 frames. Whereas the 3.3 model has a max output size of 1280, but has a higher context size of 200 frames. So that's just a note on those differences between the models. Then we have the steps. The more steps you add, it will cost more credits and will be slower, but will give you more detail in the final output. I tend to keep a lot of them at their default settings. And the one that I do change from time to time is the context settings. Context size determines how many frames are rendered in one batch. So for example, say you wanted to render a video which was 200 frames long. And if you set the context size to 100 frames, then it will create two batches of videos and put them together in the final output. You also have context overlap. You can increase the context overlap number to help reduce the sharp transition in between the two videos. But if you are finding these settings quite overwhelming or you're confused about something, then come down to the question mark in the corner for the Mago Assistant. This is a fantastic tool if you are stuck and just need help with something. You can ask a question about Mago and it should do a really good job at answering your questions. Also, I would recommend joining their Discord group as well as they have a very dedicated community that will help you out if you have any questions. And they even give you some recommendations on what you can ask it. So I could click on stylize my video into anime and it gave me the option to add in a new track with the settings that it's provided me which is extremely helpful especially if you don't know what to do with the settings and it's even given me a breakdown of the changes it's doing i even asked it what is context size and it gave me a great answer so this is fantastic if you want to know what certain settings do and if you want help changing the style of your video so when you're ready to generate, you will see you get two options here. If you just want to preview what it's going to look like, then you can do a test export, which renders out the first 48 frames. This is great if you want to save credits, but want to see how the video is going to look. And to remember to adjust the blue in and out points to select the duration of what you want to export. And as you change the in and out points, you'll notice that the generation price and frames will change down here. And just to note, depending on the length of your video, it can take a while to export. But the good thing is you can queue up your videos to render in the background. And if you want to quickly create a copy of a video you've already done, you just click on these three dots and click on duplicate. And then from here, you can go in and change the settings if you want to. So I've rendered that video and it looks awesome. As you can see, it follows the original video perfectly. Another cool feature in Mago is that you can compare different videos you've created. So I've done another render here of an anime style dancer and then command click on another. It will have a comparison window and this one has the slider so you can see the differences by sliding back and forth. And it also gives you the information, but I'm just gonna hide that. 
And you can also do the side-by-side -side model as well. So this is great to see how the consistencies are between the videos, and I can compare it with the original one as well. So you can compare up to four videos at the same time. Now let's have a look at character replacement. So I'll show you a few examples. And for this video, I turned them into a Lego figure. So in the image editor, I used Seadream and I put into the prompt, turn this person into a Lego figure, keep the same pose. And the image looks awesome. And I'm really impressed with the finished video. It did an amazing job at keeping that Lego look throughout the whole video. And when compared to the original, the movement is spot on. And I also created a cartoon alien version as well. I've also got this cartoon character as well, but if you watch this one back, you'll see the background doesn't move like the original video, as the character is just kind of floating on the ground. This happened because I used the pose control net type, and for the Lego video, I used the soft edge control net, which is a better option if you have a moving background. Or you can test out the animated V1 model as well, which is the model I used to create this cartoon alien video. So definitely have a play around with the different models. And in this video, I put myself in a teddy bear mascot costume in the woods. So if you want to change the background as well, make sure to mention it in the prompt. So the prompt I used for this one was keep the same framing and pose. He is wearing an animal mascot outfit holding a toy gun with a forest background, cinematic lighting. And then I just reiterated, keep the same pose and composition as the image, as you want to keep it as close to your original frame as possible. And as you can see, it manages to mimic the same movement perfectly. And I love that this Space Marine video here, as it's got this light coming out the front of the gun, and it's got this really nice lens flare coming from it, which gives it that kind of a cinematic vibe. And the alien one is one of my favorite shots. And it even works on animals. So I've got this stock footage of this dog, and I turned it into a raptor which looks pretty awesome. It's managed to mimic the movement perfectly. For this video, I used the soft edge control net as pose only works with humans. So make sure not to use pose with animals. And here are a few more character replacement videos. Mago is incredible at creating really cool VFX shots. I've been doing a ton of testing with this and I want to show you some of my experiments. So in this example here, I've got this video of this ballerina and I wanted to see if I could change her costume and turn her into a different material. So in this one here, I put her in a neon dress and it looks amazing. This one I added in a frozen look to her. I think it does an incredible job at, at making her feel like she's made out of ice. And here it's more like a glowing ice version. So this kind of shot where you're changing materials, Mago does an incredible job of these kind of VFX where you're changing select parts of the video. And for this example, I've got a close up of this lady's face and I wanted to see if I could turn half of her face into a kind of a robot version. So in the image editor, I used Seadream and prompted it with make half of her face robotic. And it generated this image, which I thought was perfect as it feels like she is part cybernetic, but still human. And the video looks Awesome. As you can see, it's still got the same motion from the original video, but it's inpainted those effects perfectly. This is a really good demonstration on kind of inpainting VFX you can do in Mago. And I also did a similar effect from this dog video I showed before. So I wanted to add some armor to the dog, and it looks incredible. Even with the camera shifting around, it just looks so good. It actually feels like the dog is wearing the armor. I'm really happy with this shot. And I've got this video of me from the intro. So to do this, I just prompted it with turn his arms into space marine arms. I was really happy with the image it made, but as you'll see, my face does not look like me. Now this can happen from time to time, but I actually planned out this shot so I could mask out my face and keep the arms in the same shot. So to do this, all I did was put the VFX shot over the top of my original video. Then I masked out the area where my face was to show my original face underneath. So this is a workaround if you want to create these kind of shots and have your real face and performance still in it. Otherwise, you can just create yourself into a different character and it will be fine. And also experiment with changing props. So like I showed you before with those gun videos where I turned my white cardboard gun into a real looking gun, I tried the same with this video of me holding this hose. And I actually got a pretty good job at turning it into a snake. Even though the top of the snake still has a hose attached to it, I'm sure with a bit more prompting I could fix it. 
There are so many other VFX shots you can do within Mago, like compositing and sky replacements, and so much more. Just have fun experimenting with it. Now looking at pricing, these are the plans that you can choose from. What's good is that the beginner and pro plan have a thing called relaxed mode. So in relaxed mode, you get unlimited rendering, which does not require credits, but it's capped at a 100 or 200 frame limit per video. And I'm sure they will take a bit longer, but I think it would be perfect for experimenting with. And with credits mode, it uses your credits and you can launch as many renders as you want, which are capped at a 2000 frame limit. Also, I need to mention at the time of recording this, Mago is still in closed beta, but I do have an exclusive offer. This is only available for the first 500 users to sign up using the link in the description below. This will give you direct access to Mago and allow you to skip the current waitlist. And it's only going to be available until the 7th of October and for the first 500 users. Plus, you can get 60% off your first pro plan by using the code Atomic Pro. So I hope you can see just how powerful and fun Mago is to use. I urge you to test it out and get creative with it. Once you know how to use all the different models, you can start to have a lot of fun. If you have any tips or tricks you would like to share with the community, then leave them down in the comment section down below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. My name is Jack and I will see you in the next one.